It's hard to talk about your work. I think the best compliment I ever had from a painting was a guy bought this painting and he couldn't even afford to buy it. He had to pay it off, which I thought was a fantastic compliment. But what was even better was I said to him, because I'd been talking to other people and they all wanted to know what they, all the paintings meant, and he, I said, I guess you want to know what it means. He said, no, I don't. He said, I don't want to know what it means. I want to go home, put it up on the wall and just look at it. What a great compliment that was. It was one of the best compliments I've ever had. I'm not a morning person. I'm always a bit on the grumpy side and, and once I get into the studio, I'm still not feeling great and most of the time not even in the mood. And, uh, but I've learned to discipline myself over the years and I sit down, I mix the colour, I look at the canvas and as soon as I touch that canvas with a brush, I feel great. In life, I think there's, there's always power plays, there's always someone that dominates someone else, there's always someone that's selfish, someone that's weaker, somebody that's stronger, uh, someone that controls, um, and all these thoughts are in all of us, I think. And for me, I'm allowing all these thoughts to come out. They might look a bit confusing on the canvas, but really, if you look at it, there's, like this one over here, the, you know, man going into space, and it's quite silly that we're not really meant to be up there. So I've done this guy in space, and he's trying to have a cup of tea in space. And people say, how stupid is that? Well, I say, well, how stupid going out into space? You know, you might have been bullied at school, you might have been a bully, and that will come out. There'll be someone taking advantage of someone else. It might look a bit strange on canvas, but if you really look at the painting, there's a lot of things people can relate to. I think all the thoughts we've all had through reading books, movies, going for walks, going to school, working, and all the people you meet through your life, it's all in there. And I can bring it out on the canvas. I do have a veneer of humour over everything, but it really is a little bit more serious than that. And it's really, I think, years of thoughts and what you see on TV, the movies, what you see in real life. It may look humorous, but it's pretty serious. There is a, a pattern in your work, which I don't know if other people go through this, but I do. Every time I sit down, once I've come up with the idea on paper, I think, oh, this is going to be great. And I start the painting, this is really good. Halfway through, nah, this is not looking good. By the time you finish the painting, you're disappointed. And you think, oh, maybe I should have done this, or maybe I should have done that. Um, you put that painting away, it's like a bottle of wine. It actually matures a little bit. And then you come back, and then it's not so bad. I'll start with a drawing and say it's a face with a cup of tea. I'll put that drawing away, then I'll do another drawing. And I might do 20 or 30 drawings. It's almost like putting actors together for a movie. In my work, I don't have a problem with scale. There's no, the scale is all over the place. And so it doesn't matter if this is a smaller drawing or a larger drawing, but I put them together. It's like a movie director, you know, he's pick, picked his actors and I put them on the page and so I bring, the, bring them all together on that page. Now I might do some changes there and I think, well, maybe I'll, I'll have, uh, I don't know, a cloud behind them or something spilling out of the cup. There might be a leak, a hole in the cup and the tea's leaking out and there's somebody catching the drops of tea. So I look at the drawings and there's a guy with his hands out. So he comes into the drawing. So I put all that together and I ink that in and then I'll leave it. I'll come back to it in a couple of weeks time and have a look at it. And if I think it still looks good, then I'll put it onto a canvas. Every color I mix up, I'll put into a pot with a, a number. So if I'm doing the sky and 
and I paint very hard edge. Everything's hard edge. Even the sky, if I have it going from dark to light, when you look at it, there's like 14 strips of blue. And 14 strips of blue going darker to light. Now I'll have 14 pots of paint. So each paint, each strip has its number, its code. I keep those. And why I keep those is later on, when I'm doing the main painting, if I make a mistake, I can never remix the color again the same, so I can retouch everything I do. So if there's mistakes, I'll, I'll retouch it and, start, and so on. What I'd like to do is one great painting, which I haven't done. And if I can do one great painting, I'll be very, very happy.